Um, he, uh, Mr. Mizumachi, well, also co-authored a paper that was presented at the 2008 Beijing World uh, 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 conference on um, it, um, new earthquake engineering, and his paper was titled, there were many authors on it, Generation of Artificial Earthquake Motion Using Observed Earthquake Motions. Now, the big lie in Japan about nuclear power plants is that <clears throat> they built them to withstand 7.0 earthquakes, but every five years Japan has a magnitude 8 earthquake or greater. So this is part of the setup or part of the booby trap of nuclear power in Japan. And, and they always talked about the danger of the tsunamis. They never talked about the danger of earthquakes, even though all seismologists and most people should, uh, in the nuclear industry should know in Japan that there's a major earthquake of eight or greater every, every five years. Um, so by diverting the focus to the danger of the tsunamis, they have covered up the danger or ignored the danger of earthquakes, major earthquakes in Japan. And um, that's part of the, the whole de deception. So. Mizumachi is actually a really major big player in this disaster because he's the liaison uh, for the Asian group and between the U.S., the n nuclear establishment, the IAEO, TEPCO, and the rest of the global nuclear uh, network. And a month ago, he went to Vienna and he met with, it was an IAEA conference about Fukushima, and he actually met with uh, TEPCO, the IAEA, and other uh, health physics officials and so forth. Um, and they are trying to get samples out of Japan, out of the Fukushima area, to do their own study. But um, it's not, they're having difficulty doing that. So um, he is also former, oh, and then, uh, so he's running around doing all this uh, politicking and everything. But he's part of the, um, the um, that great word, what is it? Um, ah, the, the academic flunkies, Goyo Gakusha, I love that word. That's just great. It really does describe them. So, <clears throat> now, some of the former ministers and academics actually are very honest. And one of them is former minister for internal affairs, Haraguchi Kazuhiro. He alleged that radiation monitoring station data was actually three decimal places greater, three times greater, than the numbers released to the public. So the radiation contamination the government was reporting was actually one-third of what they had measured and documented. Isn't that disgusting? Now, it gets worse. Um, uh, TEPCO... Um, the Tokyo Electric Power Company, which runs, it's actually the largest electric company in Asia. And it runs the nuclear power industry in Japan as well as uh, conventional power plants. But it's not the only electric company in Japan. It's sort of divided up into different regions. But <coughs> they have exposed their employees um, to very, very high levels of radiation. There are now 80 of these emergency employees who have disappeared and are probably dead from radiation sickness and overexposure. Um, they locked up the employees who agreed to stay in a gymnasium and made them sleep on the floors they had no food, hot food, for the first two months. 
they were fed cold packaged food, kind of like what Halliburton was sending to Iraq to our troops. And um, they had they didn't even have any fresh vegetables or fruit. Um, they uh, were locked up. Another former minister said probably so they couldn't run away. And um, there are many abandoned hotels or empty hotels and resorts not very far from the Fukushima power plant where they could have been housed comfortably with restaurants, showers, the hot springs to uh, relax in. And um, they were locked up in a gymnasium at the nuclear power plant and not allowed to leave the facility. Um, now what's happened is it's come out that TEPCO started feeding them fresh food, but it's all from the Fukushima area, which is highly contaminated with radiation. So they're just accelerating the death of their own workers. Uh, this, this is the, it's just incredible. And now the uh, president of TEPCO is so cheap and stingy and cost saver, a penny pincher, that's why he's the, the head of, Je of TEPCO. Now he's charging these employees for the food they're consuming. Can you believe that? Uh, uh, it, it just gets worse and worse. And what has happened now is that the nuclear gypsies have appeared and <clears throat> these are experienced workers who were, um, they were nuclear engineers, um, they were uh, laborers and so forth who have been lured back to the nuclear power plant industry as third or fourth uh, uh, level uh, contract workers, and a lot of them are mid to old age. Uh, the experienced engineers especially are needed to work at F Fukushima and they're being paid well, but they're also being exposed to very high levels of radiation. Um, <clears throat> part of the reason they're doing it is out of loyalty to the country, but part of it is that they can't get jobs anywhere. and. Um, they are receiving very high salaries for just uh, an hour or two of work a day. Now, <clears throat> the Japanese government announced on uh, July 3rd that they had secretly drawn up a plan to break up TEPCO. And the government is planning to take over the nuclear power industry and the liability of the, this disaster to force the public to pay for it, while uh, TEPCO will uh, continue to manage and oversee the uh, alternative uh, energy technology companies that will be more profitable in the future. Um, now, it's interesting uh, that <coughs> President Sarkozy of France, with Arriva by his side, the largest uh, nuclear power company in France, was the first foreign leader to arrive in Japan after the Fukushima disaster. And it's now very clear they were there to get uh, contracts for Arriva to do cleanup and uh, water filtering and so forth at Fukushima. But they, so far, they've done nothing but cause more leaks. Their equipment didn't work. It malfunctioned, it was poorly designed, um, and uh, uh, parts broke that shouldn't have. And of course, this is exactly what Arriva has done in France. So obviously to me, Arriva uh, and its uh, incompetence is just another way to further expose the public, the environment, and to uh, allow the radiation to leak all over the place. Uh, it's just exactly what they are doing in Europe and France. Um, now, uh, the government, like the U.S. government and the Canadian government, in order to deal with this elevated uh, exposure that is illegal under the ICRP, um, the government in Japan raised the limits. And on April 19th, 
uh, they had already, by April 19th, they had already raised the legal limit for exposure of children from one-tenth of a microsievert per hour to one microsievert per hour, which it was a ten times increase just with the snap of an, a political finger. And on April 19th, just about three weeks later, they raised it to 20 millisieverts for children, which is the limit for nuclear workers. How can you expose children and babies that are much, much, many times more sensitive to radiation, maybe by 20 times, than adults? It's a death sentence. This is a genocide. You can't call it anything else. Now, um, this... Uh, Professor Nishio Masamichi, uh, who is uh, the head of the, the, or he's at the Hokkaido Cancer Center, is a radiation treatment specialist. He's the one who blamed this on Goyo Gakusha, the academic whores. And um, he commented uh, on the Japan Teco executives, the prime minister and cabinet, the politicians, the nuclear industry lobbyists, and the academic flunkies, the Goyo Gakusha, uh, in terms of their government leadership. And this is his quote. I want you to listen to this very carefully. He said, I just cannot feel any hope for Japan's future. These circumstances are simply tragic, unquote. Right, right. And, and so th this is he, what, what he's feeling probably is the brunt of the false flag operation, which part of the technology is to make people feel hopeless because all of the, quote, helping organizations have been completely infiltrated.